Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making dark tech house synths and vocals inspired by James Hype's song Vibrate. We're going to find out if we can do this in under one hour of in-studio time by using the 80-20 rule of tech house synths and vocals. What you're listening to right now is the track that we'll be working on in this video. And what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on. In particular, we're going to focus on this melodic group right here. And we're going to work on each track in order that I actually created them. So you can kind of follow, follow along in your own workflow as you're building your own synths and vocals out. I'm going to show you how to quickly get to a professional quality level using only 20% of the effort by working with a reference track to quickly guide your decisions, as you can see right here, and slash hours of time off of your production and effortlessly mix as you go with powerful templates, Ableton racks, and one knob effects. Stick around to the end of the video, we'll explain the 80-20 rule a little bit more in a nice little recap. But all in all, these synths that you can see here and vocals took about 45 minutes to an hour for me to recreate. And as you can see, this track is fully arranged, mixed, mastered, and ready to go. And that took me about five to six hours to do. If you want to finish songs faster, just like this, I've made you a free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one song every single week. Visit the link that is on screen right now or in the description to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And if you want to take things to the next level, you can also find a link to this video's project files in the description as well. But with that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So really my kind of take on the, the synth and vocals when it comes to kind of the, these James Hype tracks, or at least this vibrate, tra vibrate track in particular, is that really the main core element is gonna make sure you have like really solid drums and a really solid bass line, because that's really gonna be driving the track. And then likely the next thing is gonna be like a cool vocal. And, um, and then everything else is kind of like, kind of ear candy, window dressing, like little kind of fills almost with the other synth sounds. So I'm gonna show you in the order how I built things out. So I felt like one of the main elements was adding some vocals. So this is the vocal that I added in. And so I think it's from some kind of like lo-fi track that I kind of like. I can't remember the name of it. Um, maybe if I click in here, I can let you know. Uh, Corel Spinning is the track. And so I used a program called lalal.ai to extract the vocal out so that I could drop it in here. And then just kind of cut it up a little bit, as you can see here, so that the vocals were landing on the spots that I wanted them to land on. It goes a little bit different, as you can see here little bit different where it was actually originally landing so i just made some kind of cuts chopped it up a bit so that it fit a little bit more with kind of this dance track then the other thing is kind of that was the first bit and then there's also this kind of like um cut up part here so let me just jump back and turn it back on and show you what that sounds like you can hear it slowly swelling it's almost like a transition solo it's pretty quiet getting louder took so almost kind of like a little arrangement effect kind of thing so i think i probably heard that in the original track as well and then so the main thing was finding a cool vocal which i just found from i just have like a youtube folder where i save tracks that i might want to extract the vocals from that kind of thing found this sounded cool boom um, wondering, let me just jump in here. I, I, I did have to change the pitch a little bit, so that's something you might have to do as well. So you'll notice that for the vocals, I have to drop it down a semitone to make sure that it's in key. And then I switched it to Complex Pro and adjusted the formants and envelope a little bit, just kind of played around with it until it kind of sounded cool. No, like, necessarily rhyme or reason there. Um, main thing after that is if we listen to the vocals, is flicking between the reference and the vocals to get the volumes right, so then. There's that beat beat. I think ours maybe a little loud now, but that's kind of the idea. Really the main thing, just like other videos that I've mentioned, is to get the volumes right. 
pick the right sounds, and then get the volumes right. That's gonna be kind of the main thing. So other than that, a little quick look at the uh, processing going on here. Again, main thing was that book, like the volumes. That's gonna get that professional result comparing it to the reference track. Other than that, I'm running it this into this cool little Alpine um, box thing. Shout out to my buddy John. Uh, he showed me this cool thing. So basically, you have an LFO on the pitch of an of the formant of this Nectar 3 plugin, and it kind of makes that kind of. If you notice that the vocal kind of sounds like it's warping slowly and changing, um, that's what's doing that. Kind of like the pitch is slowly dropping and going up and down. So that's basically what that's doing. It's kind of subtle, but cool. I think it makes vocal sound a little bit more interesting. Then I'm running into the channel strip that I usually run into. So what we got going on here is removing a bunch of the lows, making room for the kick and the bass, and shelving out a bunch of the highs. Just kind of mixing it in a bit. Uh, too much highs, it can sound maybe too present. So removing some of the highs, it mixes into the tune a bit more. And using a shelf is a bit more natural as opposed to a low pass can sound really harsh. Um, then it's running into, I'm not using the transient designer, it's running into a one side sidechain. So I'll just turn up the vocals so that you can, it's not interfering with my speaking. But um, running into one knob sidechain, so that's creating some pumping, and I have it set up in this one knob rack, so it's using a shape of the sidechain. It's going to a quarter note, which is generally like the kick drum, and then it's just ducking some volume. So this way, instead of having to map a compressor to the kick every single time, it's just one knob. You can use it by ear to taste um, instead of using your eye and mostly just incredibly incredibly fast and then it's running into some ableton saturator just set up again to one knob so i don't have to always open up ableton saturator and all that it's just right there i can focus on no visuals just focus on the um on the drive there and um not using any width but uh, this whole channel strip is usually what i have on every single audio track so i'm able to quickly mix as i go uh, make the common moves that i'm usually making not doing any like surge flow eq or anything like that just removing some lows removing some highs uh adjusting the transient shaping some side chains and saturation some width every single time and so this if you want to grab this this will be in the uh there'll be a link in the description to grab this project file as well as every single week i'm recreating a new track in the beatport top 10 usually so you can also grab that on a weekly basis as well but with that said Let's move on to some of the next bits. So there's this kind of like little techno-y fill that we're gonna listen to right here. And then it's gonna come back in here in a moment as well. And so what that is, is we'll also listen to it over here. And so what that is, is I just, I don't even know what I looked up. I looked up something on Splice. Uh, there's clearly a lot of these cool little like techno-y, weird little stabby sounds. Like doesn't happen all the time, but um, kind of like ear dressing or like ear candy that kind of happens throughout the track. Uh, so I just found a cool sample of it instead of like figuring out synths. I don't like using synths and sound design, traditional stuff like that. I like working with samples. So I found this cool thing. I cut it up and then I kind of chopped it up in different spots. Uh, in terms of any um, processing, just removing a bunch of the lows, high shelving out a ton of the highs, um, just kind of trying to mix it in a little bit. Then what I have is this erosion, which is adding this kind of like extra crispy, distorted, interesting texture to it. And then I've mapped an LFO to the frequency, so it's slowly moving over time. So that particular sound design trick here is kind of changing and evolving and um, more interesting, I would say. And other than that, running into that same one knob sidechain, so it's bouncing, grooving, making room for the kick, and then also a little saturation to fill up the sound. And then running into this one knob width plugin, which is a completely free plugin. This is what it looks like. I've just mapped like the common knobs to an Ableton rack, so that again, just a lot quicker. Uh, I'm not loading up plugins and opening up plugin windows. It's just the main things that I need to use are always there, ready to go, so I can really, really quickly mix as you go. Let's look into one of the next elements that I added which is this little guy here. And so the idea is there's a little bit of a call and response going from that first kind of synth sound to the second synth sound. So let's have a listen to that. Let's listen to it again. 
So I think if we go back, let's also listen to the reference. The little da is what I was kind of trying to copy. So, and then if you listen to ours. So it's different, and that's kind of the idea. So it's like trying to, I, I feel like the idea is when you're recreating tracks from the reference track, you want to kind of copy the vibe, copy the volumes, copy the note placements, but then start to adjust it and change it so that you can have your own original track. So there's a way that you can kind of thread the needle between copying and creating your own tune. And that's kind of what you want to kind of get to, in my opinion. Um, so the next thing that I added was this kind of like weird texture element. So let's bring the song back a little bit and let's bring up the volume on this. So it's pretty random and weird, but I wanted something kind of in the background. It's kind of like a dirty, ravey, warehousey, techno-y vibe. Um, it's adding a little bit of something interesting going on. Because again, did notice that uh, in in this track and in a lot of, I think, I feel like in a lot of James Hype's tracks, it's really drums and bass dominant. So I felt like it, I wanted to have something adding some interest and texture, even if it's almost kind of like almost like binaural. It's happening like in the background, and you almost can barely tell. Uh, just some little something little extra there. Um, so I just found something interesting in Splice. Looked up textures, and then I ran it through an RC20 to kind of add some of that vinyl crackle and some like uh, that warbling kind of lo-fi kind of sound to it. A little extra, and then what I have done here is. Um, used an EQ8 to roll off a bunch of the lows so it's not like interfering with any of the other sounds. Uh, where are we in the arrangement here? Um, and I ran it into another RC20, adding a little bit of a different kind of vinyl crackle sound, and then a bit of sidechain so that that sound is pumping, making room for the other elements, and a little bit of saturation to fill it out a bit, and then some width to push it to the left and right and add a little bit of stereo to it. Um, Pretty subtle stuff on that one. So let's listen to the next element, which that I added was, which was this, which is actually freaking cool. So let me um, <laughs> let me get to. I want to show you from this break into the drop. I'm gonna show you this pad too. So first off is the kind of synth, um, so I just found some cool, what I found was just some cool chords on Splice and just chopped it up basically. And kind of paid attention to kind of a bit of column response. Um, so that it's kind of playing against those other kind of little ear candy elements that were added in early. And so basically just chopped it up, uh, and I don't think that's too much in the original track. I just added this in because I thought it sounded like really neat. And there's a bunch of like automation going on so that it's kind of like swelling and kind of has like a wah effect. So you can see the EQ. I've automated the low pass filter at certain points so it's kind of swelling in. And um, just cool stuff there. Basically removing a bunch of the lows other than that. I have a utility so that the, I think at certain points, there's just like a pan little effect that happens. So the idea is to do it here in case I might want to make a change on the actual channel strip. And then if you can hear that crystally sound. That is using the uh, Sound Toys Crystallizer, which is one of my favorite effects. Uh, it just kind of adds this interesting texture to things. Um, and then running that into an A1 trigger gate, which is free. It's really cool to get that stutter house sound. And I've automated the mix, so sometimes it's stuttering and sometimes it's not. And then a little bit of sidechain, so it's kind of pumping and making room for the kick. And then some saturation, so it's filling up the sound a little bit. And that's basically it. And the other thing is this pad that we're listening to. Which is just playing one note. And this is, I don't think this is in the uh, original track at all. Um, this is playing one note, so it's just like a drone, is what you would call that. And it's slowly like swelling in, adding in more of the high end frequency, I believe. And so to me, this just fills out 
Oh, I moved it up the freaking thing. Let me get that back in there. Um, there we go. So to me, it just adds a lot of like body, especially to the break here. Uh, Cause a lot of this track is so minimal and like there's not a lot going on. So wanted to bring that in there and it's just playing that one note. So it's just a drone. And then it's using this UVI workstation Noctua binary systems. Just picked a cool preset cause I'm not too into like sound design, like I mentioned. Um, and then just removing some of the lows and removing some of the highs. So it's kind of mixing it in again, throwing on that crystallizer that I like to use, which is just a different preset so that it is adding that cool shimmery granular effect, which I love. Then going to side chain. So it's kind of pumping it a little bit and a little bit of width. So it's moving into the left and right. Uh, and that would be a look at all of the different synths that I added into this track. Hi, my friend, Matt from best friends club here. And if you've been paying attention, then you've probably figured out what the 80-20 rule is when it comes to creating melodic elements like synths and vocals for your music. The goal here is to get 80% of the result with only 20% of the time, energy, or effort. And because the first key to the 80-20 rule when building out your melodic elements is to use a reference track, we are making sure that we're effortlessly hitting 80% of a very professional benchmark. In particular, we use that reference track to focus on playing in the right key, following a similar rhythm, and selecting the right sounds. This just keeps things fast and focused. The second key is to mix as you go in an extremely streamlined way by only focusing on the volume of our sounds compared to the reference track, as well as using a simple repeatable channel strip for each track that we add to our songs. The third and final key is that you don't want to reinvent the wheel each and every time, so you should start a practice of repurposing your old project files by adding old project files, racks, and groups to your collections area in Ableton. By creating a suite of powerful templates, Ableton racks, and one knob effects that you've personalized and curated over time, you'll be able to get a higher quality result faster. If you'd like to get a head start by downloading all the racks, templates, and all the files that you've seen me use in the Ableton project file for this video, or if you'd just like to take a closer look at any of the techniques or tracks you saw me work on in this video at your own pace, you can find a link to this video's project files on screen now and at the second link that's in the YouTube description. I'm recreating a different song from the Beatport top charts every single week and making the project files available to anyone who wants them. You'll also get access to a private Discord where you can ask me and the community questions as well as share tracks for feedback. If you or your music are not quite ready for a shot in the arm like that, I've also made you a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that have helped me figure out how to completely finish one new song each and every single week. And you can grab that free ultimate song finishing toolkit by visiting the first link that's in the YouTube description here. However, if you just feel like staying on YouTube for now, that's totally fine. Save that link for later and check out this playlist of videos where I remake other melodic elements like synths and vocals from other songs in the Beatport top charts. Or if you want to take what you've learned in this video to the next level, check out this video right here.